Now at noon, a scary encounter for a girl in Longview. Police are on the lookout for a man who grabbed her as she walked to school. And a stolen ring finds its way back to a pawn shop thanks to the accused thief. Plus, as I think everybody knows, while the snow may be ending, the cold is just starting. It's an Arctic blast for the record books. Right now, it's pummeling the Midwest and causing travel disruptions here in Oregon. KGW News at Noon starts right now. This is KGW News at Noon. Somebody has to know something. I mean, people tell people things, so we're just hoping that the person can be caught. The family of a 12-year-old girl is on a mission to find the guy who grabbed her on her way to school in Longview yesterday. Wow, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. That girl's family is grateful she got away, but they don't want the same thing to happen to another kid. Christine Pitowanich has been following this story since early this morning. So, Christine, we found out about this through a post on Facebook. That's right, Brenda. The Longview Police Department posted all the details on their Facebook page. And since then, since sharing it last night, it has received more than 500 shares. And today, investigators are still looking for the man involved. The 12 year old says the last time she saw him, he was booking it, running down this alleyway. Today, we spoke with her parents this morning as they walked her to the bus stop. Monday started out just like any other morning for the kids who typically line up for the bus. I mean, they usually hang out right around here. But this Monday was different. And my husband comes flying through the door saying somebody tried to take Michaela. That's how Bree Bishop woke up hearing that her 12 year old daughter Michaela had a scary run in with a man she didn't know. It happened as she walked to the bus stop near 15th Avenue and Baltimore Street. And she's walking from that direction. And from our understanding, the guy was walking from this direction um, toward her and that's when she was trying to go around him um, and you know this is the vehicle that her friend said that uh, she was slammed up against. Longview police say Michaela initially thought the man was following her friend who was also going to the bus stop. That is until he approached her, grabbed the front of her shirt and slammed her up against this Dodge Durango. Everything just happened so fast. But Michaela's friend was also quick to take action. She had ran up and started pulling on her to get her away from the guy while Michaela was trying to kick him. That's when the guy let go and ran off. I mean, the alleyway was an easy access point for him to get away. While Michaela didn't get a good look at his face, she did have a fairly detailed description. Police say they think he's white, a little taller than five foot six, with a medium build. He was reportedly wearing a green puffy jacket with the word love written in black on the front, and he was carrying a red gas can. This morning, Michaela's family members posted up to keep watch just in case the guy came back around. They're glad the situation didn't turn out worse. We're just lucky. 12 year old Michaela is shaken up, but otherwise OK. Her mom says she's trying to see if there is a way to change the bus stop location to a place that is not so dark in the early mornings. She says from here on out, her daughter is going to be using the buddy system to walk to and from the bus stop. Meantime, if you know anything about who this man might be, call Longview Police. Back to you. Just terrifying. Thank you and keep us posted. Well, we are learning some new details about a shooting that put four officers in the hospital in Houston. Authorities say a large pit bull charged at the officers as they served a search warrant. This happened last night at a house where people were allegedly selling heroin. When the officers opened the door, authorities say the pit bull came at them just as a suspect opened fire. Two of the officers are in critical condition and the other two are listed as stable. Here's what the Houston police chief said at a press conference this morning. The question is, what are policymakers willing to do besides prayers to address a public health epidemic? And of course, somebody will now tweet, oh, there he goes with his, uh, it's not an anti-gun agenda, it's an anti-proliferation uh, uh, of firearms in the hands of people that have no business having guns. The two suspects inside the house were killed in the shootout.
The FBI has officially wrapped up its, investi its investigation into the 2017 mass shooting at a Las Vegas music festival, but they still don't have a motive. After almost 16 months, the FBI says it doesn't know why gunman Stephen Paddock went on a shooting rampage before killing himself. 58 people died and hundreds of others were injured. Health officials say 35 people are now sick with the measles in Clark County. That's in addition to one case here in Multnomah County and another case up in the Seattle area. Our news partner, The Oregonian, also reports two of the affected kids traveled to Hawaii. They were exposed in Clark County and then developed symptoms on the Big Island, but health officials don't think they were contagious during their flight over. The family was quarantined during their stay until the kids got past the infectious stage. There's also a potential case of the measles in Deschutes County in central Oregon. Authorities are waiting for confirmation, but the people involved are connected to Clark County. There are two possible exposure sites in Bend, Mountain Air on January 19th and Juniper Swim and Fitness Center on January 20th. Officials say both locations are now safe. In the Midwest, millions are bracing for plunging temperatures, the likes of which we haven't seen in decades. And the winter storm is causing huge travel disruptions. More than a thousand flights to and from Chicago were grounded yesterday because of the snow and frigid cold. And some air travelers in Portland are feeling the ripple effect. We checked this afternoon and PDX has canceled two flights. Commuters in the Midwest are also driving on treacherous roads. There were more than 130 crashes in Minnesota by midday yesterday. What are your plans? I got to stay at home, I think. Yeah, good plan. A major concern there is frostbite. It can happen in less than five minutes with wind chills up to 50 degrees below zero. It's so bad the National Weather Service in Iowa is warning people who have to be outside to avoid talking or even taking deep breaths. Well, meteorologist Chris <laughs> McGinnis is here now with a deeper dive into that deep freeze. That kind of takes your breath away just talking about it, doesn't it? Absolutely. My goodness, yeah, that is, that's the air that's so cold. I mean, like literally you breathe out and it just like crystallizes in front of you, right? Okay, so not only are they dealing with that, but of course back east now the snow moves into the big cities of the northeast. So New York and Boston airports impacted by the snow. But on the back side of this, it is just brutally cold. This map here is showing us the uh, winter, excuse me, the wind chill warnings and advisories. Look at the real estate covered here from western New York and Pennsylvania all the way back through Iowa and into the Dakotas. Extreme bitter cold in the forecast for the next couple of days. These are our look at the morning low temperatures 26 below zero at International Falls and Bemidji as well. Minneapolis only bottomed out at minus 10 this morning. Guess what? They're going to get a whole lot colder tonight. And as we show you the current temperatures, in fact, Fargo has barely warmed at all today. Fargo is actually sitting at 22 below zero and they're on the downslide into the deep freeze tonight. I mean, they're already in the deep freeze and it's going to get colder from there. So minus 10 as we showed you in Minneapolis, that's basically their high for the day and it's going to continue dropping heading through the rest of the afternoon. That is brutal stuff. So we will enjoy this. A beautiful look from our Rose City Sky Camera. It looks a whole lot nicer than it did yesterday. In fact, I don't see any cloud cover at all hanging over downtown Portland. The east, the east breeze with us. 13 miles an hour at the airport right now. It is 50 degrees at PDX. As we switch gears and take you out towards the Dalles, we do have the air stagnation issue east slopes of the Cascades. So that's one of the drawbacks to the otherwise really nice weather that we're enjoying. I'll let you know how long this is going to last and when the rain returns coming up in just a few minutes. Brenda. All right. Thank you, Chris. This morning, President Trump's former advisor pleaded not guilty to charges in the Russia probe. Cameras were rolling as Roger Stone left the federal courthouse, but he didn't speak with reporters. Prosecutors say Stone lied about talking to the Trump campaign about WikiLeaks and hacked Democratic emails that were damaging to Hillary Clinton. This was back in 2016. Stone has repeatedly denied any collusion with WikiLeaks. Caught on camera, uh, not the smartest move. The general manager of a local pawn shop says somebody stole an $11,000 ring, then tried to sell it back 24 hours later. KGW's Mike Benner has the story. Yeah. In her nine years at All That Glitters Pawn Shop, Tony Kastner thought she had seen it all. 
Then came Sunday evening. It does get kind of evil sometimes. It was closing time at the North Lombard store. Kastner had time for one more customer. He had his eyes on a ring valued at nearly $12,000. I was very hesitant about pulling it out in the first place. Um, I went against my better judgment and did it. Surveillance video shows what happened next. The man reaches across the counter and rips the ring right out of Kastner's hands. He bolts in a flash. Unless you've been through something like that, it, it's, it's hard to explain what it does to you. Even harder to explain, this next part of the story. As we're wrapping up our shoot, Kastner's boss calls from the All That Glitters Southeast Portland store. A customer is looking for some quick cash in exchange for a nice looking ring. He said uh, he bought it for his wife in Vegas, and I said, really? We had a ring just like that stolen from our Lombard store. Steve Souza quickly realizes the man trying to sell the ring is the same man who stole it 24 hours earlier. In fact, he's wearing the same jacket. Madness ensues. The suspect tears out of the place, leaving behind that expensive ring. Oh, I got my ring back, and the store is happy. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is an instance where crime does not pay. No, it doesn't. And perhaps nobody's happier about that than Tony Kastner back at the Lombard store. <laughs> Don't cry, it's okay. Oh my <laughs> Mike Benner for KGW News. Also caught on camera, teens are attacked at this restaurant in Aloha. You can see them sitting in a booth at Mi Jalisco when a man walks in. A guy storms into the restaurant and um, punches my friend and then I look up and I see his face he's an Asian man with a bunch of tattoos and then he punches me right after and then I black out a little bit and then blood just starts coming down my face so that teen didn't want to be identified but he says they didn't do they didn't do anything to provoke that attack the man had a diamond shaped tattoo on his forehead he was also driving a black Mercedes Benz with a Washington license plate Portland police say a man pulled a gun on a driver and then rammed the man's vehicle and took off. Officers arrested 34-year-old Kelly Pyatt yesterday. Police say he pointed a gun at a driver near Southeast 8th and Division. Officers followed Pyatt and took him into custody. They say he had a loaded firearm on him. He faces several charges, including DUII. People should disable FaceTime as quickly as they can, or else they expose themselves to, to bad actors. Coming up, she is talking about a major glitch for a popular iPhone app, the bug that allows other people to listen in on your conversations and the expert advice to protect yourself. Plus, we all know it's important to get a good night's sleep. Now it may help with pain management. We'll explain the connection next.